Claudia. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Toasters. Good Hi, guys. Monday morning. If honestly, if we didn't stop, like I probably wouldn't have been able to stop the entire show. We should do one Black show, not China. this show. We should do one random show where like no one's watching. Maybe on yeah. like a Wednesday. Wednesdays are slow. Yeah. Where you do the whole show in Good Morning Millennials voice. Good morning. We are so excited to be back on this beautiful, bright, and sunny Monday in New York City. How's everyone feeling today? Woo! I'm feeling okay. I didn't take my vitamins, so I'm a little slow, but... I'm feeling very slow, and I had, like, a little bit of a bellyache before bed because we shoved our faces at Nobu last night, and then, like, I got home and, like, ignored the bellyache, and I just woke up not feeling right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. A little stuffed. How do you feel now? I'm feeling alive because I'm on the toast. Yeah. The toast is a great place to be on Monday morning. We have a great show for you today. Not we only are we going to hit you with the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast, but we have a very special guest, Corinne Olympios. Yes. And we are so excited to talk to her. We got a lot of questions for Corinne. And it's like been a while since we got some good scoop. And I know. I'm, I'm ready for and it. And she always has the best scoop. Right. She doesn't even have to try and she just has scoop. She's, and she has a new hairstyle. We saw it. Yeah. Very Ariana Grande. Yeah. I'm you guys it. are going to see it. So if you do have questions for Corinne, she'll be coming on later in the show. I'm watching on Facebook. Jackie's on YouTube. So make sure to leave a comment asking her anything you want to know. And we will get it to her as long as it's appropriate. So Claude, Does that how, sound like a plan? They can't respond to you. In, I know. It's hard. Honestly, I mean, they can. Let's, guys, does it sound like a plan? Let me know. <laughs> I'll let you it know It sounds like a plan says. to me just because we really don't have another choice, you know? I know. Honestly, like, we need to get an audience up in this joint. Okay, Fan Friday. Yeah. We're bringing back Fan Friday. It's just a matter Eventually. of time. It's just about it's a matter space. Of, it's a matter of when, not if. Yeah. Um, okay, how was your weekend? I was just about to ask you that question. My weekend was fantastic. Let okay. me tell you why. I slept probably 12 hours each night. Like, really? Feeling like a star. And not only did I sleep a lot and get a lot of relaxation in, I accomplished so much in my apartment. Yeah, you did. Oh my God, I took it from zero to hero. It's still not 100% done, but I started the weekend at like 50% done. I'm at 75 now. And it feels really good because I was living in squalor. Like yeah, I FaceTimed you. FaceTimed you. and like I'm shocked because Jackie is like, not that you're clean, but you're like Organized. neat. Yeah. And the fact that like there were so boxes was crazy. And I know that they weren't yours and they were out of your control because it was Zach. Zach has so much stuff. But like I was, you know what? I was I was shocked and dismayed. No, and we FaceTimed, and I almost wish I had taken pictures of what things looked like before, so I could show you guys how hard I worked. But I know that Claudia knows. Like you yeah. saw my closet before I made yeah, those, those shelves. shelves. And also, just like a shout out to me because okay, I sure. took my ass. Sure. I took my ass down to Home Depot. You I did? picked out all of the hardware for shelves. Not one person helped me there. Like a small frail girl by like building shelves. Give me some help. I can't eat and I shan't. Yeah. And I took it all with me. I Ubered back home with all of my shelves in tow. And the handyman did put up two rods, but then I put up all the shelving. You so, did? Yes. Because it's my second time building those shelves because so I built them know, up in my last yeah. apartment. So I knew what I needed, the supplies. So if anyone like needs some shelf consultation, I'm your girl. I did and all are my you battling measuring. a cold? I'm hearing some nasality. It's allergies mixed with potentially a cold from sleeping with the air on. Oh. You know. I have built up an immunity, whereas I actually get a cold if I don't sleep with the air on. <laughs> Interesting. Also, I wanted you to know at Home Depot, they do sell ceiling fans. I saw them and I, and I thought of you. Oh my God, you. I am itching for a ceiling fan. Because but do you have to have an apparatus in your ceiling so in order to attach that's one? That's the thing. I haven't done enough research. I was like about to buy one on Wayfair. They had like glamorous ones that like had, they were like palm tree leaves. I loved it. Like these. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, we got some new ferns. Are you guys into it? We're just, we're now between more than two ferns. We're yeah. now between like six ferns. We got the ferns. Can you believe it? We got the ferns. <laughs> we got the ferns. We got the ferns. We got the ferns. Yeah, we got the ferns. That'd be a great theme song for um, our show. And then I was thinking, sorry, back to my point about my ceiling fan, <laughs> was like I would buy the stupid ceiling fan and like have our handyman come up and like he would be like, sorry, you don't have the apparatus, you know? <laughs> And I, just, I hate when you don't have the apparatus. Especially, like, in my building. I live in the most strict building. I literally got yelled at this morning. I like, know. I get yelled at all the time. I got a nasty email that I had three boxes waiting for me in the lobby. I'm like, they're my ferns, please. Like, I was just <laughs> waiting to pick them up to take them to the show. I don't want to, like, leave them in my apartment. <laughs> Whatever. I live in the strictest building. And I swear they would have, like, sent me a bill if, like, I had the handyman come up for five seconds and, like, he, like, wasn't able to, like, do because there was no apparatus. Right. So I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. But in my next apartment, I'm heavily... Heavily fucking with a ceiling fan. Okay, I look forward to it. I also just want to say, I did not hang the shelves in less than seven minutes. No. It took me more than seven minutes, but you know, maybe I'll get there one day. You know what? Not everyone can be a Rob's Valletta. <laughs> um, 
I caught up on Pump Rules. We'll talk about that at another time. Let's talk about it tomorrow because the new episode is on tonight. And I just want to talk about the other part of my weekend, which was Snitch's, Snitch's birthday. birthday. The greatest 21st. Which was truly the greatest 21st. It truly was. The she most, had like the best time. The most necessary 21st. No yeah. one has ever needed to tw- turn 21 more than Margot Washer. Oh my God. And honestly, like she was having, you know what's so crazy? She was having a pit. Okay, so me and Margot went to the Brett Eldridge concert where I got to meet so many toasters and Claudettes. Like it was amazing. And Margot's party didn't start to 11. So at like 10.30, we left the concert and we're going to Margot's party to like set up. And she's having a pit in the car about which ID to use to get into the bar where her party is. I'm like, bitch, you're turning 21 in an hour. Relax. She ended up using the real one. I'm like, obviously it was fine, but she literally was so nervous up until. I mean, I'm so glad that that pit has been permanently absolved for her. But what's One so pit down, thousands to go. Is Don't you feel like margot has been drinking alcohol like forever? Forever, because we've been drinking alcohol yeah. forever. But it's also like because she hangs out with like 23, 24, 25, 26 year olds, it's like that's the level of like, Drink. No, and that's also the level of like what her party said becomes. So like, yes, it was a 21 year old's party, but like when it's populated by mostly 25 year olds, like you're getting a 25 year old vibe and not everyone wants to hit the club after. No, it was majorly popping. It was majorly popping. And she had a great time. She looked unreal. She really, oh my God. Which is really all that matters. She looked, no, no. All that matters is that she got the most amazing photo in her unreal outfit. Yeah. It was amazing. So I really wish you guys could have been there, but you weren't invited. So sorry. Um, And in case you were curious, the password to get in was snitches ain't. Of course it was. The, dra- the bouncer Honestly, was like, hey guys, is they or ain't they? And then you would have to say snitches ain't. Yeah. I think anyone could have guessed it, actually. It probably wasn't super secure. No, there were definitely some, some, some crashers. Stragglers, but it's fine. It's the more, fine. the merrier. The more, the merrier. And we hit a personal goal this weekend. We hit 3,000 Patreons, which means 3,000 of you are subscribing to our Patreon, which means you're getting five extra episodes a month. Audio only, really kind of focused on us and life and family and love. And it, the first episode was a hit. Oh my God, a smash success. Like, I'm obsessed with it. Me too. Not that I've listened to it back, but me the feeling that I get. And also, seeing all of your, like, responses to it yeah. made me just, like, so happy to do it and really made me glad that we opened up yeah, in, me too. in a way that, that we never had before. And that's why... For today's episode, we're filming today's episode. Mm-hmm. It'll probably either be up today or tomorrow. Um, we are taking your questions part two in the Toasters After Dark group. There's a whole thread with questions, so y- ask away. So if you are a Patreon subscriber, you are eligible for our Patreon Toast After Dark group on Facebook. So just apply and Jackie will cross-reference. Make sure that you're an, actually a Patreon subscriber. And then voila, you're ready to go. But that's the thing about like hitting your goals. So like this was a major goal. Like I was so excited to hit 3,000 Patreon subscribers. And like now, what's my new goal? 10,000. Oh, really? Oh, let's play a game. Okay. What are we going to do? I love doing things like this. Okay. Okay, honestly, I know what we're going to do. Take a bath in hot honey mustard? When we hit 10,000 Patreon subscribers, not when, if, we are going to throw a massive toaster party. Like, we are going to rent out a space. Toasters can fly in. If you're a toaster, you're allowed to come. Oh, my God. I love that. That's such a good idea. Oh, my God. That would be so fun. And there'll be, like, drinks and everything. Oh, that'll be so fun. Okay, you guys. For our sake and for yours. Yeah. Let's do it. 10,000 Patreon subscribers. It'll probably be in like six months, so like I'm not gonna push it so hard, but like when we get there, we are throwing a party. Okay, and like we'll reference this episode. Yeah. As what, day what we're is gonna it? do. It's May 7th, the day after Snitch's birthday. Oh man, tomorrow's my friend Alicia's birthday. I can't forget. What are you guys doing for it? Big um, plans? I don't know, I'm waiting for her. She always gets the birthday blues, you know? Like she just makes big plans and then like a day before she's like, Oh, I don't know, I don't really wanna and then she ends up doing it. You I know? feel like most people like are the opposite. It's like, oh, I don't really want to do anything for my birthday and the day before it's like, why didn't you plan me a party? Right, right, right. Honestly, I'm like, I'm so over birthdays. I'm like, so over birthdays. I'm over my own birthday, and I'm over, like, having to pretend to have a good time at other people's birthdays. I like, agree. We are old. We're, we're going to do this every year. Like, right, and, like, every year we're going to rent out a bar and pretend you're 19. Like, yeah, no, like, I'm down to drink, but, like, stop acting like you can't say anything, like, remotely offensive to someone on their birthday. They're like, it's my birthday. Like, shut up, bitch. You're annoying. You know no, what I mean? like, when it's someone's birthday, everything they do is right. If you need, if they need a bottle of water, go and grab it. Like, but fine, see, fine, fine. I'm not about that life. No, fine, fine, fine. But, like... The day before, no. The day after, no. Right. The weekend before, no. The weekend after, no. I'll show up to your party. I'm going to be nice to you on your birthday. And that's as much as you can expect from me. And, like, maybe a gift. Oh, yeah. It depends on the person. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I'm so over birthdays. Like, we're old bitches. And, like, it's sad. Snitch has got some amazing gifts from the scenes. Yeah. I bought Snitch an entire... Like, I spent so much money at Sephora, but, like, it was worth it. Snitch has the saddest makeup collection <laughs> because it's not it's, only... That's like, Okay. It's a bunch of drugstore products, which are pretty good, but, like, she's not skilled enough to, like use them properly it's a bunch of drugstore products mixed with so much uh, premium premium stuff free that you stuff get that yeah so like whenever i get big packages but it's like, like stuff that she doesn't need right so, just so she's it using on. it because like she has it yeah so i went to sephora and like from primer rose water all the way till eyebrow gel like i went all the way brand new like premium nars 
I bought Kat Von D because I'm not here to stereotype. And Agreed. I don't believe rumors anymore where there's smoke, there's not a fire. I bought the, the palette, which I used after I bought it for her, like when she opened oh, it. Oh, I used everything you it bought was, her. Yeah, it was amazing. No. And I bought her milk makeup foundation, like expensive shit. Ugh, I'm so happy for her. Me too. And then it was great because she got a whole package of fun birthday presents from Stony Clover mm -hmm. from Kendall and Libby and it was yeah. so cute everything like initialed and so now she has what to put her makeup in right which and, is a big problem to begin with and then I got her really cute Stony Clover fanny pack which I'm obsessed with and I knew that she wanted and then I also just got her like a boatload of cash yeah which is what I knew that she, she really needed. needed yeah so all in all she and had a good birthday her cash too. and I'm truly excited for it to be over so we could literally start talking about something else yeah your birthday. Oh, no, Olivia's no. birthday is the next one. Let's talk about something else. The fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your own morning toast. Okay, this first story <laughs> is just like happy, joyous, lovely occasion. Danielle Staub got married to Marty oh, Caffrey. I'm so happy. In for the her. Bahamas at Luna Beach Club. In Bimini. Oh, I can't think of Bimini it without It always being comes back to Bimini. It always comes back to Siesta Key and Rachel, and Rachel. Lindsay, and Vanessa fighting. This is the thing. Kind of one of my favorite parts about being an award-winning morning show host is that we get to have guests on. And I get to like meet people who like debunk everything I thought about them. And Danielle Staub was really one of those people. I'm, we, when we met her, I was surprised at how like normal and like straightforward and like smart she was. And honestly, her husband is so cute. I'm so happy for her and I love her. And, and that reminded me of one thing I want to say. Which is? I love Margaret Josephs. Me too. No, no, no. Like I love her. No, she's is the definition of like having someone come on and like just changing our entire perception. But not even that. As a human being, she sent me the nicest DM. I don't think I have even told you this. It was the most lovely DM. Like, and she didn't have to. I met her once and like, I said like on the sh that on our show that her character was annoying. Like I said things. She sent me the most beautiful DM about how she knows I'm such a nice person and that like, I'll get through that. Like, so nice. I was like, oh my God. That's so nice. She I will have, I don't care what she does, she will have my support till I die. Oh, well, after she came on the show, she would have my sport too. Yeah, and she was it's everything. Just, like, but all the stuff that she was doing on the show just wasn't translating for me until I met her, and then it all clicked made and sense. made sense. And that's why Melissa was like, when we saw Melissa, we're like, you don't really like Margaret. And she was like, no, no, I'm telling you. Yeah. And you know what? That's what we get for doubting Melissa Gorga. I just love sometimes being proved wrong. Me too, Leanne Locken. We've been proved wrong so many times. No, it's just like, you, you learn something new every day and every time you're on the toast. Okay, and also, I'm, I wouldn't say that she proved us wrong, but... I did really like Telly Mellencamp when she came on. I don't like her character, but that's totally separate. When she came on, it was too soon in the season to have an opinion about yeah, her. Yeah, but she was So lovely. having met her has made, has made me, it's like I would dislike her on the show so much more if I never met yeah, her. Yeah, I just liked her vibe. She was really, really pretty. And her husband like came to support. No, they were just like normal good people. Our little Instagram show. We always talk about Teddy Mellencam. It's like I, I also forget so many of, of the other guests, guests that we've had. We've had epic guests. Like we've had Dorinda. Like, oh, yeah. has that changed? Like, that didn't even, like, I loved her then, I loved her now. Yeah. Let's do that. We had Ramona. <gasps> oh, man, remember when Ramona did push ups? Yeah. What a treat. What a treat. Who else did we have that I, I just always forget? We just had so, we had Jillian Jacobs, Gillian. Oh, my God. And I've been, I've been finishing the last season of Love. How is it? Um, honestly, it's okay. Like, I'm, now I'm like less sad that they're ending because it's not as good. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, oh. Anyways, <laughs> okay, never mind. Sal Marty married Marty Caffrey. <laughs> Listen, bitch. I didn't say anything. You can't yell at me when I say something and when I don't. Pick a lane. I read the stories every single day. You get off happy scot to. free. Give me the iPad. Scot free. Okay. Good luck. They chowed down and danced afterward at the nearby no, Hilton rooftop bar. No, but you missed the paragraph before with all the important details. Okay, so she <laughs> mar married Marty Caffrey at the Luna Beach Club in Bimini. Oh my God, she's 55. The 55-year-old Rahonj, they didn't write that, they said Real Housewives, I abbreviated, star. <laughs> Create, she took some creative liberties. Ooh, she chose some of her fellow housewives as, as bridesmaids, Teresa, Melissa, and Margaret. Kind of weird to make someone your bridesmaid who you literally met a year ago, but okay, I love Margaret, and she. if I knew her when I was getting married, she probably would have been my maid of honor. Totally, too. and they're filming for the wedding, so like the more housewives oh, you have true. in your wedding, the more time you'll get. And, like, some friends you just make instantly, mm -hmm. and you know they'll last a lifetime. Kendall. Totally. Like, it's so wonderful to make friends late in life. No, I was just saying this to someone, how, like, my friends are either, like, from middle school, like, Anna Rachel Lisa, like, best friends since middle school, or, like, literally people I met a year ago. Like, John is, like, literally my best friend. I've only known John for, like, a year or two years. Eric. That's crazy. I know. We haven't, we've only known Kendall for a year. Yes, I know. And, like, literally she's our best friend. We met her at Coachella. Oh my god. <laughs> Actually a year. It's yeah. crazy to think about that. Um, hey, her two daughters, Christine and Jillian, were also bridesmaids. Her, da her daughters are really sweet. And pretty. I really like appreciate how much like she loves her kids. Like would literally do anything for them. Agreed. And there was like a cute little arch. There was a beach moment. It doesn't look like a ton of money was spent, but like I'll live. 
Um, and like, do you think Bravo footed the bill? So when it comes to these types of things, I've said this once, I've said it before, just like having been in bridal PR, which I literally was in for a year. I was literally a bridal publicist. Do you want to be my bridal publicist? Ask me anything, I'd be happy to. Okay. Um, but so this is how it works. Like, Bravo would never pay for the wedding. They pay for the trips, but they would never pay for the wedding. But in having your wedding on TV, you're able to barter certain things. So like it literally is written in TMZ. They chowed down and danced after at the nearby Hilton rooftop. That was probably pitched as a part of the PR story. And the story. Luna Beach Club is. And the Luna Beach Club. So they definitely got some sort of barter deal. Like everyone does it. If you're like, if your wedding is in any magazine, you got some shit for free. Great. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy for her. Me too. I truly love her. Okay. I feel like lost no, no, so about my next? iPad. No, no, no. Okay. Next story. Story number two. John Cena and Nikki Bella share cryptic messages ahead cryptic? of their... Cryptic? Cryptic messages ahead of their canceled wedding date. Oh my God. Did they have dates set already? Yeah. I think it was like May 5th. Shook. Okay. Are Nikki and John they trying to tell the world something? They literally before their wedding. Oh my God. I didn't realize the severity of this. It's very severe. But they just got engaged. Actually, no, they, no, didn't. they didn't. They got engaged. Remember that was like one of our first shows yeah, you where we you announced right. they got engaged at WrestleMania. Oh my God. They were originally set to say I do on May 5th, literally on Friday. Saturday. That that changed three weeks ago when the pair announced they had decided to call off the engagement. That's crazy. I feel like they should have really called it off sooner because, like, I knew it wasn't right. Do you know what I mean? No, you you were their biggest supporter. No, I was their biggest supporter, but, like, you can't change a man. But she changed a man. Really? Because she's not married, so it doesn't look like much changed. I don't know. Seemingly acknowledging the heartbreaking significance of the day, Cena wrote that it was, quote, important to keep moving, even when life seems to throw misfortunes across your path. He, he tweeted this. Literally on the day he was supposed to get married at 9.56 a.m. Like he was thinking about it all day. If you choose to keep moving, no matter how low the road takes you, it will eventually begin to climb back up. Hashtag never give up. But like, like when I look he, at pictures of them, I'm like so sad. What is he hoping for himself? That he's going to find someone else that right. just doesn't want to have kids? Like, and he, that he's going to love someone more than he loved Nikki Bella? Like, how is that even possible? So one day earlier, Cena and J Bella also appeared to acknowledge the importance of May 5th when they both shared cryptic messages on Instagram. The total Bella star posted an image of a quote which read, chin up princess or the crown slips. Cena opted to share a close-up image of Day Zero, a book by Cressley Cole about the apocalypse. John Cena's Instagram's out of control. Have you seen it? No, it's too it's too much for me. I don't like know enough about Honestly, it. Honestly, this the is like middle school type shit. Like makeup in real life or stop posting things on Instagram. I just I'm, I just don't know what his end game is, you know? Like, just I to, like, look have at a perma girlfriend. You know what he needs to be with? Oh my god, I have the perfect match for John Cena. Stacy Keebler. She's also a wrestler. And she was also a permanent she was a professional girlfriend. Yeah. But she's married, but with, she's kids married with kids now. When I look at pictures of John Cena and Nikki Bella, like, it makes me really sad. She was meant to be Nikki Cena. No, she was, like, they were the queen. Like, it's no, like, you know, how like, in, you know how in Trainwreck when he was like, you could be my CrossFit queen. We would yeah. rule the CrossFit world. That was the two of them in WWE. No, it's just like, he's the quarterback and she's the head cheerleader. Do you know what I mean? No, it just is. And I was just really happy for her. That so she, it's like, like, who is he going to find? She beat the system. Like, when, when she did it, she, like, moved into that house in Tampa. Like, she did it. She worked so hard. And she did it. And she deserves half of his fortune. It's not about his fortune. No, no, it's about getting him. She's so rich. He's yeah. such a great guy. But he's such a great guy. Here's I totally the thing. Agree. She would have done anything for him. And so, like, what she would have had to do is Give not up. have children. And no one should do that. And like, Unless they don't want she kids. She can't love John more than she would love, like, her potential children. Maybe he was meant to be with Kyle Radswell. Maybe. Oh, my God. Actually. Because he just wants a perma girlfriend. And she just wants, like, a casual. He doesn't want to live with. He didn't want to live with Nikki. She doesn't want she anyone doesn't want on to her the couch. Perfect. Perfect. Hmm. I um, love a happy ending. <laughs> I just. No, I'm, I'm not over this. I feel like this story's not over. I I completely agree. Like the book has not closed on these two. You know what? If this was a movie, she would move if on with her we life. If were a movie, oh, you'd be, be the, the right, right guy, guy and I'd be the, the best, best friend, friend that you fall in love with. In the end, we'd be laughing. <laughs> Every watching the sunset fade to black. Show the names. Play that happy song. Whoa. Are you ever singing a song and you're surprised when you know the next lyric? And yes, the next all the time. Is, that was one of those situations. Wait, I had something else. Oh, so if this was a movie, no singing, please. <laughs> if this was a movie, she would move on, get married instantly, like have kids, like find out she wasn't happy, and like five and ten, or ten years later, like be single with a kid. She got what she wanted, and then she'd be able to go back to John. Yeah, but does John want to be a stepdad? 
okay, like he needs to meet us halfway. Like he doesn't want to be a real father. He can be at least a stepfather. Totally. And that's to a kid, not to say. And to a kid. Wait, that's not to say that stepfathers aren't real fathers. Because I know people, especially Megan King Edmonds, are like really sensitive about that. And I'm not trying to offend <laughs> anyone anymore. Especially in five years, like the hard work is over. The diapers are changed. Yeah. Like you're into the phase of throwing a football with your son. So yeah. I think he wants to be there for that part. I just like. I'm, I just really, like, I want her to win. Do you know what I mean? No, she will. I'm, we should all support her. Like, like she has that line of, like, lingerie birdie. Yeah, birdie B. Let's all support it. Okay. I think she's time financially. No, it's not about financially. It's about emotions. And, like, professionally. Like, we need to make her bigger than John Cena said. He's, like, crawling back to her. We need to get that her. That would be so hard. He's literally the richest man alive. We need to get her in movies. No, no, we need to get her invested in the tech startup that has, like, a huge future. She needs, um... She needs a video game like like Kim like yeah, Kim up, Kardashian. Yeah. And while we're at it, we should have Tiffany Thornton get involved also. And she, no, and Nikki Bella needs to come out with like a line of shoes for Kmart. <laughs> totally. No, no, I'm sorry. A line of workout wear for Kmart. And Macy's making that Jessica Simpson money. And, and making that J Lo money. Oh my god, I'm literally laughing so hard. This is hilarious. Hilarious. Okay, let's move to our no, third Tiffany story. Tiffany Thornton is doing really well. Like I follow her now, and she gets a lot of Instagram ads. I know. And I'm, I and like I, she gets um. Planet Fitness, what's it called? Well, it doesn't matter. What's the one that all the Bachelor people do? Vanity Planet. Vanity Planet. Well, that's cringe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, third story via TMZ. Black China, she's worthless without you know the Kardashian your ties. Bought, bought Vanity Planet stuff, Margot. Good for her? Yeah, I think she likes she it. She used Lauren B's code. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Black China's value has plummeted, oh my god, at clubs across America. And the reason is simple her wagon has been unhitched from the Kardashians. Black China's turning 30 next week. We're told she spread the word to promoters she's available for club bookings. We did a little digging, and turns out China's earning power has fizzled since breaking up with Rob Kardashian, unless waging courtroom war counts. It doesn't. The numbers are staggering. Wow, wait, this is unbelievable. BC, also known as Black China, went from booking gigs that paid her up to 30K not too long ago in her heyday with Rob and crew, to now struggling to snag more than 7K a gig. That's so sad. That's what several top club promoters and told us, and Callie told us, and it gets worse. One promoter said he wouldn't pay her a penny more than five thousand because China without Rob is like Sunny without Cher. A top Miami promoter That's said that's an insult to Sunny. The max he'd shell out is two k because she's not relevant anymore. China's new boo isn't helping financial matters either. This, according to one promoter, who said her relationship with eighteen-year-old rapper YBN Almighty J, who can't even get into twenty-one and over club, is just whack. OMG, the finances of being an Instagram thought never cease to amaze me. Never cease to amaze. I feel like <sighs> the, the the value she brings is like, I would pay to see Black China because I just want to see what she actually looks like yeah. as opposed to on Instagram with Facetune. I don't know. I just find this shocking because like, I know how much they pay like Instagram people and like I'm fairly- For a post. And I'm fairly familiar like with the market and I find this shocking. I thought that even in her heyday, she'd be making way more than 30. I agree. Well, especially if she's with Rob. Right. But, like, do you remember, this is my, like, the most sad story and, like, the reason why China and Rob were never meant to be together. Are you ready? You're going to be really sad. Okay. Like, right when they started dating and, like, right when she had a tiny bump, she got booked for a appearance in Vegas at, like, some really hoochie, like, low-grade place. And TMZ found out that, like, oh, man, this is so sad. So the venue flew her out. This was, like, at her top shoot. They flew first class. And Rob came with her. And they didn't fly Rob out. And Rob had to sit coach. What? Yeah. But and Rob is the higher, like... But he wasn't being paid to go. It was just China. But, like, he couldn't afford first class? What mm. about that Arthur George money? I don't know. I'm just saying. How sad is that? It's so sad that Rob was literally, like, gifted a sock line, his, like, small dream, and he, like, can't even show up to the factory. Do we only have four stories? I'm just checking no, the No, the iPad. fifth story, because... No, well, there's one more here. Oh, okay. Do the fourth story, and then I'll tell you what the fifth story is, because you forgot. Okay. Are you guys ready for our fourth story? How huh. are you feeling so far? I'm feeling okay, but I just... Were we done talking about Rob and China? Oh, no, sorry. Keep going. No, it's fine. How sad is that story? It's, like, not that sad. What's sad is that, like, Rob can't afford first class. Like, yeah. it's sad for the Kardashians, not for Rob, because they gave him everything on a silver platter. Yeah. And, like, now I look back and at those Arthur episodes. Dar Arthur, Arthur <laughs> Judge. I love Arthur Judge. <laughs> Arthur Judge. Socks were sold at the Colgate bookstore. They were sold at like, Neiman Marcus. Like, the there definitely is money in that They made their way account. to Hamilton, New York. Like, they did? How insane is that? There's, like... So I have no, no sympathy for him. If he wanted to make money, he could have. He doesn't even post shit on his Instagram about the socks like Chris does. Right, yeah, no. And the, but there's still an Arthur George Instagram account, right? No, it's like they're still making socks, but like it's a shell of a company. Maybe it's a front. I hope so. 
wouldn't that just be great if it like went like under? Another mattress firm situation. Chris would never let it go under. No. I think that's why she's single-handedly keeping it afloat because she won't let one of her businesses No, fold. she's like, Mother Day socks on Arthur George. Like, that you are not fooling anyone. Honestly, it's probably a money laundering thing. A mattress firm situation. Is mattress firm money laundering? Have you not seen this? Where the conspiracy theories? But like, here's the thing. People, the conspiracy, this is the problem with the conspiracy theory. It started because people were so confused why there's a mattress firm on every corner. What people don't know is mattress firm is sleepy as rebranded and I went there and like they were really amazing and delivered the next day and like please okay just because you're a friend doesn't mean you can't also operate a good rest uh business I feel like a lot of restaurants are fronts but like but the people didn't think Sleepy's was Sleepy's is like the number one mattress brand in like the entire country I don't know it's fishy it's Where's not it? it's not fishy I'm standing by a mattress firm they literally saved my life on two occasions because you know me and Ben broke our bed I do know that they delivered you new... broke your mattress no uh the freight like the Whatever. So we went. They gave us a new thing. We broke it again. How? Just living on it. Like, that's how you know we need to lose weight. Where was it from? Mattress firm? Maybe they made cheap shit. No. They came. Fix it. Two seconds. Because they know their shit is cheap. No, 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 no. Because it's a front. Okay. Story number four from page six. Adele turns 30 with Titanic-themed birthday party. I love this story. Adele was the queen of the world at her Titanic-themed birthday bash over the weekend. After turning the big 3-0 on Saturday, the British singer publicly thanked loved ones on Sunday for fulfilling her wishes. This was her Instagram caption. Dirty 30, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the next 30 years as I've been blessed beyond words with my life so far. Thank you to everyone for coming along on the ride the last 11 years with me, my family and friends, and entertaining my super fandom of the Titanic movie. So she dresses Kate Winslet's Rose to it Bukater. How do you pronounce her Rose's last name? Just Rose. Bukater? Bukater. Rose to it Bukater. I guess she's from Philadelphia. Oh, Bukater. She, yeah. Adele posed for a photo atop the stairwell that looked just like the one in James Cameron's epic 99 blockbuster film about she's the not from. Sorry, she's not from Philadelphia. She was traveling there. She was going to settle there, but she was from. British. Yeah. Okay. She was from British. So it looked Wait, just like the one. Wait, do you want to hear a fun fact that I just sure. put together? Adele and Black China are the same age. And just said, because like, like China is so much more accomplished, you know, <laughs> and rich. In April, okay, uh, this is what Adele said about her party. Last night was the best night of my life. Here's a couple pics. I'm absolutely fucked. Not sure I'll make it out of the house again. Okay, here's the thing. I feel like Adele gets like Jackie O level hangovers. Yeah, but like with wine. To, I mean, same. It's a redhead thing. It's, it's just like a, a sensitive, cherubic woman thing. Totally. Her skin is soft like butter and literally. Um, here's the thing. I know Titanic is an amazing movie. But it was also a tragedy. And like that's like me literally like having a Holocaust themed birthday party. Do you know what I mean? Like people died. I agree. Does nobody else think that's weird? Yes and no. Yes, it's like the it's like a, t a Titanic movie themed birthday party. So it wouldn't be like having a Holocaust themed, it would be like having Schindler's List themed. Weird. Still no, weird. it's like Titanic's amazing, it's the greatest love story of our time. But like let's me not forget like all the people and animals who died. The animals. I can't and I shan't. And I know it was a Kentucky Derby this weekend, but like, when are we going to stop using animals for entertainment? You consider horses like animal abuse? Not abuse, but like, and they really do take really good care of the animals. But they, like, they get like, they have, live better than us. But like, they live the life of Riley. But like, just if let I them have live. a horse, if I have a racehorse, I'm calling him Riley because he's living the life of Riley. If I get a horse, I'm naming him Archie. Why? I don't know. I just like the name. It's a great name for an animal. For an that's, animal. Um, that's Shannon, Shannon Medora's dog's, dog's name. name. And but honestly, Archie, it's a great name. But then Archie's dog's name is Vegas. Who's Archie? Like KJ Apa? KJ Apa. Oh, in the movie. You guys, I mean, Riverdale is out of control. I'm so behind. It has become like a full-blown, like, not even horror show, like, like terrorist show. Oh, really? Wait, okay, like, I'm really going to catch up this week. The is a terrorist with also the worst aim I've, of anyone because... Please don't ruin it. I'm I so won't. behind. You need to catch up. It's clearly I'm, not a priority for no, you. No, it's and not. Honestly, but now it is. Ryder Ross is disappointed. Fuck. Okay. I promise I will get back. It's so fucking crazy. Like, I have to prepare myself. I can't watch it alone either. Mostly because, like, I won't watch without Zach because he would be, like, upset. And also it's scary. And also it's scary. Like, there's a terrorist on the loose. I used to not be able to watch Desperate Housewives alone because it used to get, like, scary. Oh, my God. When there was a man in the basement? Yeah. Oh, my God. The, the Cherry he, family. Yeah. That was so scary. No, what was it, her like, last name? She was always making cherry pie. Apple what? Apple, apple what? something. Yeah. Uh, she... Apple bee. Uh, no. Apple something. Someone will write I'll in the comments. It. I'll Google it. Um, but yeah, no, Desperate Housewives like started out like cute and like, oh, a housewife committed suicide because she couldn't take the pressures of being a housewife. And then it turned so dark. Like there was Apple a, White. There was a baby buried in a treasure chest under the pool. 
Applewhite. A baby's bones buried in the treasure chest under the pool. And there's just like so a many. A baby's okay. bones. Okay. <laughs> and there's like You're so. You're not listening. A baby's, a baby's bones, bones measured in the cherry chest under the pool. I heard. You don't even know. I do know. This is the thing. There's so many amazing actors in that show. Amazing. Well, it spawns Orson? some of the greatest actors of our generation. Brie Vandekamp. Or, no, but like, she was never in anything ever again. Like, we only know Marsha her. Marsha Cross. No, she's from uh, Melrose Place. Okay. Orson. Well, yeah, he's from like Twin Peaks and um, everything. Or, and, and Charlotte's yeah. husband. He plays the same character. I mean, Eva Longoria. Everything. Felicity Huffman. Oh, Jackie. Frazier's Jackie. wife. Madison de la Garza. Stop. Gabrielle Solis' daughter, Juanita, who is also Demi Lovato's stepsister. Frazier's wife. Camille Grammer? Felicity Huffman. Camille Grammer? No, in... wait. What's Felicity Huffman's husband? William H. Macy from, from Shameless. Frazier. What? Is Frazier? <laughs> yeah, we'll ask Corinne. Kelsey Grammer we'll is Frazier. We'll ask Corinne. Oh, my God. Wait, we have to keep going because Corinne's coming. Corinne. Oh, wait, you guys. I told you my friend Alicia always cancels her birthday. She just texted us. She's doing a taco theme something. Is it? Is she going in or going out? We'll Definitely see. Definitely staying in. She's deciding between uptown or downtown. Um, who else from that show? Oh, Terry Hatcher, who went nowhere. Uh, that is not true. She has a web show. Just like us. <laughs> we should, it's like a cooking thing. We should do like a um, Sweet Life of Hannah Montana with like Terry Hatcher's web show and yeah. our web show. Yeah, no, it's actually very popular amongst um, women 35 to 48. Oh, cool. Yeah. Congrats, Terry. Um, <laughs> Terry is a horrible name. I'm sorry if we have any toasters named Terry. Like, it's literally a rough name. Like, I can only think, when I think of Terry, like, literally, like, a school principal. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a terrible name. It's a terrible name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our fifth and final story is only one that you have to see to believe, which is Becca Kufrin's Bachelorette oh, promo. Right. Okay. Came so, out. It's to she's the song, an independent woman, woman, baby, all right. So she's an independent woman who is literally like doing anything to find a man, which is just, <laughs> I love the message, you know? It, it's just cohesive. I love when like, a she's brand... She's an independent just, woman who's willing to embarrass herself on national television in order to find a man to marry in a month. Oh, everyone's wondering where Jacob is, Why, by the way. It's his last day of school. Like, please, let him live. Let um, him graduate, you guys. What are you trying to stop a man from getting his education? Yeah. Wait, back to what we were saying? Independent woman. Who needs a man? I just want to say, like... I'm not here for Becca K, and like I'm ready to be proven wrong, but like she's so like regular and like everything about Basic. it, everything about it is regular and like everything is just fine, and like plain. And she'll probably like meet a man, and, like they'll get married and live forever and like never have sex. You know what I mean? It's like everything's just so regular and boring. Vanilla would be the word. Yeah, that's what people said about Ari and Lauren. I don't care. I love them. Everyone can eat my ass. <laughs> okay, I'll get you, I, a, I'll I get you a fork. <laughs> I literally love them. Also, I literally love them, and, and like honestly, the toasters hate them, and like they're perfect for each other. Anytime, like, like they what put else up do you want Instagram, from a couple? When you want Ari to choose Becca M and live the weird, like them make no sense. Every time, like they put up an Instagram, like someone screenshots it and puts it in the toasters, and all the toasters are like, "Oh, basic lame." Listen, you guys, we need to seriously rebrand our thoughts on Ari and Lauren. I love them. Also, like every picture where you post and you're like making fun of them, they both look beautiful, and they look no. like they're so happy. Mm. They're living the life of Riley on the racetrack in Australia, like getting free flights to Finland. Do I we don't ever fucking meet know either of them. No, but why do I feel like we know them? I feel like I've met Ari. You didn't. They both follow me on Instagram, and honestly, I slid into Ari's DMs, and he did not answer, which was not did cool. Did he open it? Yes. That's really sad. I, he was getting so much shit. I was like, honestly, like I just want to let you know, like I love you and Lauren, and like I hope you guys have a happy life together. And like such a nice message. I think you respond that, to that. I think that they will have a happy life together just because they want to prove everyone wrong. Everyone wrong. Like sometimes that can be such a significant driver. Jordan and JoJo. Jordan and JoJo, and even Rachel and Brian, because yep. like they. Have, everyone thought. Everyone thought that she. But I think also she just like also happens to love him dearly. I am absolutely in love with Rachel Lindsay, and no one could say anything bad about her. I will literally come to your house and murder you. And I just want to go to Dallas and like party with her and Raven and Alexis. Did Alexis move to Dallas? I was gonna. DM her the same thing. Because when I did my my Instagram story, like, vote, like, where should I do my next thing? She responded, Dallas. And, I was like, and she's there with Rachel, like, doing a workout class. I, I know. And she, she posted a picture with Raven in Real Housewives of Dallas. I just need to know. I just, I agree. I just, Anyways. And, and by the way, and I think Rachel Lindsay's um, promo was one of my favorites. That's, That's my girl. That's just, it's I quality. can't listen to that song without thinking of her. Also, JoJo's Wasn't Bad, Confident by Demi Lovato, like, Things it was could okay. be worse. It was okay. Things, she was like, no, but that was when you loved her. Like, because she was yeah. just coming off of Ben's season. She was like, we a thought woman she got scorned, robbed. Yeah. Rising from the ashes, confident. It was just a great time to be alive. Yeah. No, I'm like, I just, I watch 
Rachel's all the time. Oh, also, um, try not to cringe, but let's do the damn thing. Oh, God. Now we're cursing on cable? <laughs> Please. What does this world come to? I'm just saying, people don't like the word damn, and especially the, um, the Bachelor Nation is, like, very, like, American, and I just don't think they're going to like the use of the, the D word. They should have gone with darn, pulled a Hannah Montana. Yes. Or just let's do the darn or, thing. Jackie, or just completely, instead of, instead of not using the word damn, maybe they should have completely rebranded the entire thing and maybe rethought who they would choose as their bachelor. Or just take out that one line because I literally hate that line. Do you like, who would you have preferred as the bachelor, Becca K or Becca M? Becca K, because I, I think know. Becca M is... I, I just like feel like she watches everything that's said about her. So Jackie even... Cerny has some insight on Alexis. She said she isn't loving LA. She talked about it on Caitlyn's podcast and said she wants to move to Dallas. I'm here and I think for her it. boyfriend's family's from Dallas, right? I don't know why she, I thought she had ties to Dallas. Some people just have them. She was like, yeah, I think some people just have ties to Dallas, like me. Okay, so that ends our five, <laughs> fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. We are going to take a quick break, and when we return, we will be back with Corinne Olympios from Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise. If you have any for question, <clears throat> for questions, if you have any questions for Corinne about dating life, Bachelor stuff, I don't know what else you could think of. Feel free to drop it in the comments. I'm watching on Facebook. I will do everything I can to get them to Corinne. We're really excited that she's here. So we will see you in a few minutes.
Okay, we are back on the morning toast with our favorite guest, Corinne Olympias. Hi. Hello, Corinne. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm so good. How are you? We're so happy that you're here. I'm really happy to be here. Oh my gosh! Like it's been what a while. Is, it's been a while. I'm like, what is up with Corinne? So I've just been living life. Yeah. I am single, and I'm just working on my projects and just. Do you prefer to be single? I'm having a lot of fun being single right mm -hmm. now because I feel like I just went through a lot this last yeah. year with like paradise and yeah. my ex-boyfriend and then dating someone new and then getting into like the tabloids and freaking out at me. It's mm -hmm. just like I'm like just doing me and I just feel really good about it. Yeah. Well, you look so good and you did Thank lighten you. your hair. Yes. Yes. I'm lightening You're my hair gray, whitish. Is it like giving you an alter ego? Like. I feel really hot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I feel so hot. I was yeah. just texting my sister. I'm like, Taylor, you don't understand. My eyes are popping. Yeah. Okay? I'm like, it's yeah. so true. Have you ever been a hair color other than blonde or is this the first time? No, no, no. This is this is like really stepping out of my comfort zone. My yeah. hairstylist was like, I really don't want to do this, Crane. You're going to hate it. Like, I'm really scared. I'm yeah. like, no, no. We got this. Yeah. No, it looks really this. good. And you're it doing does. major Ariana Grande vibes. I know. Are you going to wear your hair like hers, her. like in high pony ever? I think so. I mean, first I gotta get the color right. I yeah. think I need to be a little bit lighter, but mm -hmm. I've been like toning it with like blue shampoo. Yes. So. You'll get there. Yes. Takes time. I yes. would say like the number one question we got for you on social media is like, uh, what's going on with you and Tamario? Because, Tamario? Yeah, because you guys hang out all the you time. You went to Coachella together. went to together. Coachella together. Okay, yeah. And it's just like, after everything that happened in Paradise, it's like an unlikely duo. A hundred percent, and I agree with that. But Demario and I are are really close friends. Yeah. And so I ran into him weekend one at Coachella and and Jasmine and everybody and we were just like, let's go to weekend two. Yeah. It wasn't like a thing. Like we were with other people too. Um, we went with like Vernon Davis and his girlfriend, which he's so nice by the way. And yeah, we're just friends. Okay. Good. Social media can make it seem. Different. Yeah, everyone like wants you guys to date. Yeah, everyone I ship ships you guys. the two It's of you. just not. It's not the cards. It's not that. It's it's not. No, I don't. I just don't see that happening. Yeah. I just care too much about him as a friend, and that's it. No, I like you guys as friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm here Speaking for it. Speaking of friends or former friends, we got a lot of questions about Gigi from <gasps> Sir, oh my God, yes. your former assistant. Where did this come from? Okay, she put it on, put it on her media. Instagram story. Wait, what? Yes. What okay. did she say? So she Jackie had knows posted, it better. One of the toasters posted it in the toasters group. This is why everyone should be in the toasters group because I would have Same never formed. seen this. Wait. She posted like a DM where someone asked her um, if she was still your assistant, and she said, "No, I was never her assistant." And I was just like her paid to be her friend and that she was going to go on a podcast and talk and that about what? it. She was going to do, do a podcast and explain to everyone what happened between the wow, two of you. Wow, it's really crazy how much she's really trying to like What actually this. happened? We met her. She When you were on our, yeah, The Breath. she was definitely my assistant. She was not paid <laughs> to be my friend. She actually turned out to be a really, really nasty person. Shook. And I'm really surprised that I'm even hearing that she had the balls to go on social media and talk about it. Yeah. Wow. It's I'm so, like really like, wow. Yeah. I'm so heated. you just let her go? Like, no, I didn't just let her go. I'm not that kind of person. I actually dealt with a lot of attitude yeah. and I, I, my manager was like, it got to a point where like everyone around me was like, Corinne, you need to not be afraid right. of your assistant because like, <laughs> I, I really was like yeah. afraid of her. I'd be like, "Are you okay? Like, what? Like, are you sure? Like, where do you want to eat today? Like, oh my god, I'm shook. <laughs> no, I literally was like a doormat. To right, her. right. Oh my and god, it just got to a point where it was just like insane. So I paid for her to come to Aspen with me, mm -hmm. and so over New Year's, and I was like, at that point, she was just giving me so much attitude, and I'm like. It's either gonna be a huge blowout fight, yeah, or we're gonna just like squash everything. And of course, we got into a huge blowout fight. Her and my friend got into a really bad altercation, and Ooh. I just, yeah, there were there were hands thrown. Shook. It got um, physical. I am so shocked because I'm I've shocked been that you really didn't know. I'm surprised that you didn't know. That. I've been really respectful of, uh -huh. of keeping her situation private from the public right. because it's really embarrassing yeah, for it her. Is. Um, if only but you, you knew didn't the know whole thing. No, I had no idea. That she spoke anything about it. Like, no, and I'm Imagine really like, so above it that you don't even yeah. see what like someone's saying. Wow, that is honestly like 
I'm like, I'm actually like really mad right I'm now. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you knew. <laughs> no, that's really funny. But I saw the comments on Instagram. I'm like, why are people talking about this? Oh. oh. That's yeah, crazy. I went on Sheena's podcast, and all I said was that we're just, I don't work with her we're, anymore, yeah. and I, we're not friends, and I don't like her. That's it. But so she used to work at Sir? I guess. I didn't even know she, that. She was the host that, like, James slept with when... Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I believe so, when he had all those scratches on his back. I heard that yeah. she tried to go back to Sir, and, like, they didn't let her or something. Shook. I don't even know. Shook by Whatever, why are we even talking no, about no, yeah, yeah, all, no, she wa- all she Do you remember she took the mic last time we were on here? And she yes. like, all she wanted oh was God. to be in the spotlight. All she yes. wanted was that. Shook. You guys, when we were here, I totally forgot about that. Corn was on, just beating corn. And, <laughs> like, Olivia used to, like, be behind the camera. And, like, we would need to give her a mic because, like, you need to hear we, what she was saying. And this girl, like, took the mic and started talking on the show. And we're like, no, <laughs> dude, no, you have no idea. That's, like, not even happening. She literally wanted to, like steal like my thunder always. Sure. I'm like, first of all, I took her to a meeting about a Snapchat show mm-hmm. and it was a really big meeting and this girl is fighting with the producer, Stop. screaming at each other from across the table, <laughs> getting into politics. I'm like, first of all, why are you even talking? Right. She blew that deal for me. Right. Don't even get me started on her. Oh, so my first God. of all, let's not even talk about her. She, yeah. she all she wants is this. Let's right. talk okay. about Riot Society. Yay. Yay. And your podcast. Yay. Okay. Yay. Oh yes, so random. And I was you, on it. Yes. 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 You How were. was it going? And were you on Spencer's or was Spencer on yours? Because you're both with on, Podcast One, right? Yeah, I was on Spencer's. Um, I love Heidi and Spencer. Yeah. Their son is so cute. Oh my god. Did you see god. the son? Yes. Oh my god. Where did you film like it? A dream. In the studio. Yeah. Oh my god. And was he there? This who? The son. Gunner. Yes. He was. Is he well behaved? So cute. Heidi was like doing the podcast, like wrapping herself like with the baby, like uh, mom like, to work. Oh my god, she was. I was just like, you are like a Wonder Woman right now. Yeah, she that's was so killing cute. It. Yeah, I love them. And so, how's the podcast going? It's going really, really well. Um, actually, I'm going to be making an announcement hopefully soon. Make it right now, please. I really want to. I just don't know if I'm allowed, but okay, yeah. we're going to be changing my podcast up. Basically, we're going to be doing a special with. Um, like another news outlet mm-hmm. where it's going to be like either like a once a month or once a week type of podcasty show mini series mm-hmm. thing. Oh, fun! With someone really cool. So oh, it's, it's so cool. Yeah, That's so I'm really excited. And then my book um, <gasps> shook. Yeah, so my book was getting to the point where it was just like too funny. Honestly, <laughs> oh my god, honestly, too funny. I'm obsessed with you. Like I agree. <laughs> Like, this show is too funny. But, like, sometimes <laughs> I would, like, be working with my ghostwriter, and I'm like, I can't even believe that this happened to me. Yeah. So we decided to make my book a fiction about a fictional <gasps> character, and it's going to be about me, but it's like we're turning it into a story about right. a character. That's so, so Kendall cute. and Kylie. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they, they have, like, that. a book like that. About, oh, really? like, two girls, like, in L.A. Oh, I didn't even know. I'm so <laughs> bad at that stuff. Wait, and so Amanda Stanton is also writing a book. Do you guys get together and, like, write at Starbucks? So I actually... <laughs> Actually, no, we don't, but... You should. I know, we really should. She's working with a different ghostwriter. Yeah. Um, I actually met her randomly. She's like, I'm writing Amanda's book. I'm like, hey, we're both writing books. Uh-huh. <laughs> so when's your book going to come out? Well, it was supposed to come out by the end of this year, and now, since we're kind of, like, rebranding it a little bit, I'm not exactly sure. I do want it to be perfect, though, before I put it yeah. out, so... You have time. I'm going to find out soon and be making an announcement. That's so oh, exciting. I love announcements. I love also Bachelor uh, alum books. I read them all. Yeah. So I'll be reading Would you yours. ever do I like a tell-all? No. No? Like about Paradise? Nothing? No. Nah. Are you over it? I'm, I'm really over it. Would you it. go back to That's Paradise? What I, was say. I would go back to Paradise. I don't have... I, I, I would do anything with the Bachelor family. Yeah. I love my Bachelor family. I Wouldn't think... something funny? Yes! I, I just say... I think this is really funny. I can't tell if you're about to say something funny or be like, this is funny. And like, you're going to say something mean. Like, no, 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 no. It's just my, um, my friends who I'm staying with here, um, one of the guys went out to dinner last night, literally left the building and FaceTimed me. He's like, Nick literally just walked right by me. Oh my God. Everyone sees Nick ever. Everyone sees Nick. I've not seen Nick since after the final rose. What? Not one time. All my friends are like, oh my God, I just saw Nick. Oh my God, I just saw Nick. I'm like. Literally, how? Like That's I crazy. was just with you. Like it's the weirdest. Like thing not ever. even at Coachella. Nothing. Nothing. Never one time. And all my friends see him all That's the weird. time. I'm That's like, so weird. It's like I miss him just. It's like yeah. the universe it's is meant to not. Be. But you guys are on good terms, right? Yeah, I think so. Like if you saw him, you would like give him a hug. Yeah, I would. I would. Okay. Are you on good terms with most of That's what your I was say. the girls that were on your season? 
Yeah, yeah, I think. Anyone like you hate? Or that hates you? <sighs> you know, I think everyone's over the whole hating thing. Mm -hmm. I just think it's like a mutual known thing that some of the girls and I just don't get along because oh, of like really? some things that were said after Paradise. Like when, who? Like, I think I'd probably say like Raven and Danielle. Like I, I went out of my way to try to like men's things with Danielle and it's just like not. Nah, Didn't work. Yeah, like at this point I'm like on better terms with like Vanessa. Oh wow, sure. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. I'm not even on good terms with Vanessa. I hate her. <laughs> oh, no, really? I never met her or I don't think she knows who I am. I just really hate her. <laughs> I she pisses you. me off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dead. Let's play a game. Fuck, Mary kill. Oh jeez. Okay. Last time I did this, I, I made headlines that I wanted to kill Meryl Streep, so. Oh, okay. oh. let's hope that this happens. Uh, we love headlines. Okay, you have Nick Vile. Okay. You have Demario. Okay. And you have Alex YQ. Who's Alex YQ? <laughs> dead. He was on Paradise with you. The really short guy. Like, oh, why? Alex. Alex. Oh, yeah. my God, no, I don't know last name. Oh, fine, fine, okay. Fuck, Mary kill. Oh, wait, who is the middle one? Nick, wait, Demario, Demario, Alex. Okay, um. I think, we're all I think I would marry Alex. I mean, I was just gonna say, we're all agree that we're gonna kill Alex. Oh my god, no, he's like really, really sensitive. Really? I had a really deep talk with him. And so he like, didn't even you, like try to kiss me or anything. He was so respectful. If you killed him like fake, he would be upset. I think so, but like, where is he even? He's a, a Marine. But Former. He, oh, is he not still? He's like on Instagram. Yeah. He is? He's on Insta? Yeah. I've never seen him. You should follow him. him. I think I do follow him. <laughs> I don't, I okay. really don't. Okay, so you're matching Alex. Okay, I am going to kill Nick. Of course. And I guess I'll have to Mario. Yeah, okay. again. No or kidding. Did I, yeah. <laughs> Actually, we didn't have sex, just so just okay. so everybody knows, we did not have sex. Oh, in paradise, you're saying? Yes. We made out. Yes. Who cares? And stuff. And stuff. ETC, period. Mm -hmm. Et al. Et al. Well, that's. I ship you guys. I'm happy. I'm, I'm really happy for you guys. You never know. You really never know. Have you met Ari? I have not met Ari. Did you watch his season? As much as I could. Right. I just really, the whole, yeah. ew. I feel like once you're on it, like, you can't even begin to just watch it and, like, and like you know how fake person. it is. Yeah. You just, like, know everything that's happening. That's yeah. the thing. It's just you're like, ugh. Like, that was this person yeah. saying this. You know what I mean? It's just, like, yeah. very... I don't know. Once once you're on something, it's like I feel like that it's was ruined. all reality TV. I was watching X on the Beach last night and I was just like, I can't even watch reality no, TV. No, X yet. on the Beach is especially bad. Have it's you really would you bad. ever go on that? I was asked to go on it. Oh, I'm sure. And I didn't go on it. Yeah. And Are I'm you glad it's up for you. I didn't go on it. Yeah. But good for Jasmine. She yeah. looks amazing on oh, the I think she's she great on any show. It's just she's the epic. premise is like a little too weird for me. I tried to watch the first episode and I'll watch anything. Like I even watch Are You the One? So like I know all those people. And I just I wasn't feeling the edit. So Don't I'm you out. think it's weird when they're like, Are you the one? Um, influencer, this, that, and then it's like The Bachelor. I'm like, Yeah. What about Vanderpump so Rules bad. too? It looks so bad. But like, I think all in all, honestly, like I love my Bachelor family. Love, love, love so much. It's where Corn was born. Yeah. Okay? I will always love them so much, but I just really feel like they are just killing the franchise. I, we like, agree. get your shit together. It's so What do you think that they could do to make it better? <sighs> Unfortunately, I just think that the show is just going a different direction than how the show used to be, where mm -hmm. it was like really magical and about and love, like very very serious. Instead of it being more about reality TV and like what goes on yep. in the house, yeah, it was never about that until recent seasons. Yeah, I feel yeah. There like. was always a good balance of like the stupid drama, but then also like the real love. Mm -hmm. And we're and getting less and just, less yeah. of the real love. And like mm -hmm. I feel like we haven't seen like anything like magical recently. Yeah, and it's like, it's just the girls are just getting younger and younger, yeah. and sillier and sillier, and just like, it's like the things they're doing after, like I just feel like, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's getting less and less respected and it makes me sad, honestly. Yeah. Like I'm like, hello, Mike Fleiss. Like, what are you doing? What are your thoughts <laughs> on Mike Fleiss? I just, Is he the devil? I don't really know him. That's Have you a, met him? No. Oh, really? That's crazy. No, I never met. Have you met him? No, no but oh. who? Uh, Caitlin told us she met him when she was chosen to be the bachelor, and they had like a really scary meeting in his office. <gasps> like scary because yeah. he's scary. He didn't do anything. Yeah. I, I feel like he is. Kind yeah, of like I would not take a meeting with him. He's so scary. No. What if he wanted you to be the bachelorette? Oh, I would do it in two seconds. What do you think about Becca as the bachelorette? Do you I'm know her? I'm happy for her. She seems like a really sweet person. I just, I don't know. I just think she's a little bit. 
I think she's an amazing person. Boring. Yeah. That's what we said. That's all. Regular. Yeah. Yes. Who from this, Who from Ari season would you think ha would have made a better bachelorette? Hmm. Are you friendly with any of those girls, Becca M? I've done interviews with Becca M. Mm -hmm. She's sweet. I mean, I don't really have a issue with anyone. I just don't. I just didn't think that that season was fun yeah. or interesting or even Ari. It was all of them. It wasn't yeah. like anyone in particular. It was just it, that whole yeah. season. Like the Bachelor sucked. The girls sucked. Yeah. Like it, they tried to make drama out of like. I don't even know. It was just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, you're so funny. Okay, I had a question and I literally forgot it. It's okay, take your time. We're no, it was rushing. important. It's always important. It's always important. I can't remember. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. If Claudia yeah. remembers her question, she'll Maybe I'll DM you. it to you and like you'll... <laughs> and then we can post it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was important. It was like... Something about Raven. I don't remember. Raven? Whatever. Yeah, no, like along those lines. Like... Friends, girls, like oh well, well, this isn't it. But you watch Frasier, right? Oh my god, we were just talking about this. <laughs> oh. We hate Frasier. We've like, never, what? we've never what? seen it. We've never seen it. But we oh just my god, like, no, but we, no. whenever we think of like we're like who watches Frasier, we know you watch Frasier. Yeah, okay. you're the only person. We Niles know. Crane is a literally my spirit animal. Who's that? He is Frasier's brother on the show. Who's oh Frasier's wife? Frasier does not have a wife. He has an oh. ex-wife, and she is epic. What's her name? Okay, her name is oh Lilith. And who plays Lilith? her? Lilith. Lilith. She's, a, she's an actual she's an, Lilith. She's a Lilith of a woman. Is there one episode that you would recommend us to watch? Like if we were to get yeah, into what's it, the what's your episode favorite of episode? My favorite episode of Frasier is probably the one where Niles is getting ready for a date because he had just broken up with his wife and he's like trying to iron his suit and he burns his finger and he faints and then he wakes up and he realizes he burns his finger so he faints again. It's really just <laughs> such a good Honestly, show. it sounds terrible, but I'll watch it. Oh my God, it's so good though. But like, it's frustrating when you love a show and like you're trying to get someone, like I love Friends and like Jackie doesn't. Do you, like, do you watch Friends? How, who doesn't like Friends? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I think it's so annoying with the laugh tracks and the Rachel She's and the out of control. They're so annoying. Did She's you see the Saturday Night Live of like the girl making fun of Rachel? She's like, oh. Come on! <laughs> <Joey>. <laughs> I didn't see it, but that sounds funny. It's so good. It's so we good. We need to catch up. <laughs> everyone, please give it up for Corinne. Corinne, where can everyone follow you on social media, hear updates about the podcast, about the book? Okay, podcast is so random with Podcast One. And my Instagram is C Olympias, and my Twitter is Corinne Oli. Corinne Oli, give it up, everyone. We are Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We are live on YouTube, on Facebook, and then available on the podcast app at The Morning Toast. So make sure you like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and leave a review about how beautiful, stunning, and gorgeous we are on our podcast page. We will see you tomorrow. We hope you have an amazing week. Bye.